This conference will now be recorded. Hello students, I'm Dr. Divya from T9 Street. We are in the 8th chapter, Human Health and Diseases. So, so far we were learning about uh, what is the disease condition and different types of diseases, their symptoms, then causative organisms, etc. Then we discussed about the prevention of all kind of diseases right so now we know how to prevent these diseases how to prevent by maintaining personal and public hygiene we can prevent so many diseases then we learn about immune system right what is immunity and what is immune system all these things we have learned so our immune system that plays a major role in preventing all these kind of diseases so when we are exposed to disease causing agents then our immune system plays very important role or major role in preventing this kind of diseases when we are exposed to disease causing agents then the innate defense innate defense of our body like skin then mucous membrane then antimicrobial substances present in our tears in our tears and in saliva, all these antimicrobial substances are present. And all these block the entry of pathogen into our body. What is the role of all these things? They will prevent the entry of pathogen in our body. So if the pathogens, again, they are gaining or the again they are getting, after all these things, they are getting the entry to our body, specific type of antibodies are there antibodies and cells all these kind of cells and antibodies they will help they'll help or our immunity that will help to kill all these pathogens so immune system that is having a kind of memory we have learned about memory b cells and t cells right so immune system is having some kind of memory so again again and again we are getting exposed to same pathogen they will keep, this immune system will keep that in memory because they have special, special kind of cells which is having or which is having the capacity to remember this kind of entries. So the immune system, it will respond very rapidly and in a particular way which can block the entry in such a way that will react that immune system. So this forms the basis of that protection. Okay, so that protection such kind of protections, how we can give by vaccination and immunization. We can give the protection to our body, to this kind of diseases. So we have learned about immunization, how that immunization is helping our body to prevent from this disease. Then what is vaccination? Everything we have learned, right? Then in today's class, We are going to learn about some other disease. See, there are some other type of diseases which cause the death, death of many people. So, they are mainly, you know, the main diseases like cancer, AIDS and all. Okay. So, some diseases which are causing the death, even the death. It's not like simple fever, common cold or something like that. It's not like typhoid, diphtheria and all. That causes the death of that individual. So, this kind of diseases, diseases like cancer, AIDS and all, these are very dangerous diseases. Then, first we will go to AIDS. What do you mean by AIDS? So from that word, what is the expansion of that word AIDS? AIDS means Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. It is Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. So the word AIDS means Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. That means
deficiency of immune system that is acquired during the lifetime of an individual indicating that it is not a congenital disease got it so that means infected person if an infected person won't have a good immune system or they are suffering from immunodeficiency that case that condition is called as aids acquired immunodeficiency immunity is deficient there or there is a deficiency of immunity okay we can't withstand we can't survive from that kind of diseases so that condition there is a deficiency of immunity so that infected person they won't be having good immune system our immunity won't be much powerful to withstand or to survive from diseases so that person will be suffering from immune deficiency so this deficiency of immune system it is not inherited okay this is not an inherited case or it is not hereditary this immune deficiency that situation or that disease or that kind of diseases it is not inherited or it is not hereditary these kind of situations aids it is not hereditary that's what i want to say it's not a hereditary disease this is acquired during the lifetime of that individual got it it's not a hereditary disease it, during the lifetime of that individual that individual is acquiring that disease so this indicates that aids is not a congenital disease that means it is not inherited that is acquired during the lifetime of that individual so we said acquired immunodeficiency syndrome what do you mean by syndrome again one more word is there so from the word itself you can write the whole thing about that disease it's acquired acquired during lifetime of that individual the next word is immunodeficiency there is a deficiency of immunity that is the condition of aids if one person is getting infected with aids there is a immunodeficient condition that person won't be having the capacity to withstand or fight against particular diseases the next word is syndrome what do you mean by syndrome syndrome is a group of disease or a group of symptoms see that person who is infected with this aids he won't be having a particular one disease there is a group of disease a group of symptoms so that person's immunity that person already his immunity power is very 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 less so that person can't survive from that situation that's why it is ending in a death got it so syndrome is a group of diseases or group of symptoms so first time aids was reported in 1981 during which year in 1981 first time reported aids reported in 1981 then all over the world that got spread due to the spreading that the different methods are there for spreading so different ways of spreading it's there so due to that because they won't be having exact knowledge about how it is getting spreaded or how from one person it is getting it is going to another person that time when a disease is starting they won't be having clear picture about that so that got infected so many people got infected and around 25 million people died due to that infection due to aids infection got it so the word aids that stands for acquired immunodeficiency syndrome so this means there is a deficiency in the immune system that is immunity power is deficient and that is acquired during the lifetime of that individual it's not an inherited disease it is acquired during the lifetime okay then syndrome next word is syndrome syndrome means group of symptoms or group of diseases you can see that group of disease or group of symptoms then it was first reported during 1981 aids was first reported in 1981 and in last 25 years it has spread all over the world killing more than 25 million person so around 25 million people died due to this aids infection next is 
AIDS, it is caused by human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. We used to say HIV. HIV, what is the expansion of that? Human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. Human immunodeficiency virus. That is a member of group of viruses called retrovirus. Retrovirus. Okay. AIDS, AIDS is caused by HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. In human being, that immunodeficiency virus, that virus, if it is getting infected, immunodeficiency, our immunity power, we lose the immunity power. So in human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, that is a member of group of retrovirus that belongs to HIV, that belongs to retrovirus. That is an important point, retrovirus. So retrovirus, what is the speciality of that retrovirus or what is the difference in that retrovirus? Retrovirus is having an envelope enclosing the RNA genome. Here you can see this is a structure. Like this you need to give the structure of retrovirus. Here you can see the lipid bilayer. Lipid bilayer in all viruses you can see the lipid bilayer. The envelope protein. Retrovirus is having an envelope enclosing the RNA genome. It is having an envelope enclosing the RNA genome. So retrovirus have an envelope enclosing the RNA genome. The genome, retroviral genome, genome or genetic material is RNA. So HIV is a retrovirus or it is an RNA virus. Retrovirus or RNA virus. RNA virus, it is having the genetic material will be RNA. Okay? So this retrovirus, the genetic material is RNA and it is enclosed in an envelope. That RNA or the genetic material is enclosed in, a, in an envelope. The transmission of HIV infection that generally occurs by see, this virus how it is getting spreaded from one person to another person. See, for COVID, we said through sneezing, through that droplet, it is getting spreaded, right? But in the case of HIV infection, the transmission or how it is getting spreaded through sexual contact with infected person. If the person, one person is having sexual contact with the HIV infected person, through that, this Virus will get transmitted. Then, another point, by transfusion of contaminated blood and blood products, through blood transfusion and all, through body fluid transfusion, this can be transmitted. This virus, HIV virus, can be transmitted from one person to another person. Then, by sharing infected needles, as in the case of intravenous drug abusers and from infected mother to her child, through placenta. Okay. From infected mother. If a mother and mother is having HIV infection and the carrying baby is having chances of getting that HIV infection through placenta. Got it? There is a relation with the mother and the carrying baby. Through that placenta, that infection can be transmitted from mother to baby. Then another one is by sharing infected needles. See for intravenous drug for intravenous drug for those drugs and all for using drugs which are you that drugs and all for intravenous drugs we we'll use needles. So such needles by sharing such kind of needles this disease Again, the disease HIV infection can be transmitted from one person to another person. So what are the chances or how it is getting transmitted? Through sexual contact with the infected person. Then by transfusion of contaminated blood and blood product. Then by sharing infected needles in the case of intravenous drug abuses and then infected mother to her child through placenta. So these are the mode of transmission or these, this is how the infection is getting transmitted to another person. So
people how people will get this infection those have multiple sexual partners they they will get this kind of infections because they are not bothered if you are not bothered about the condition or infection such kind of those who are having multiple sexual partners they will get this kind of infection then drug addicts who takes drug intravenously that's what i mentioned there in the case of intravenous drug abuse they will use the same needle for injecting that drugs to veins right so that time they will use multiple people will use the same needle in that condition also they will get the infection then individuals who require repeated blood transfusion some people they need due to some disease or something they need uh, repeated blood transfusion conditions and all in such cases also they will get or there are chances of this disease transmission then child born to an hiv infected mother that's a condition d we said from infected mother to her child through placenta okay so individuals who have multiple sexual partners then drug addicts because they are use the same needle for application of drugs intravenously then individuals who require repeated blood transfusion in some kind of diseases they need blood transfusion repeatedly so in such cases also there is a chance because body fluids it is getting trans, uh, through body fluids it will get transmitted and child born to an hiv infected mother so all these conditions through this the transmission of hiv infection generally occurs got it then we should know that through simple touch or through simple physical contact hiv won't get spread from one person to another person see people don't have exact knowledge about this kind of diseases so they will always they will avoid this hiv infected people right but we should have exact knowledge exact idea about this kind of infection so it spreads this hiv spreads only through body fluids okay so hiv infected or aids infected people should not be isolated from family or society usually people will tell hiv infected people they will people will hesitate to mingle with such people see from one mother one child is getting that hiv infection means that is not the mistake of that child right but from the mother the child got that infection and through blood transfusion if some diseased people through blood transfusion there is a chance of getting hiv infection and for drug abusers just now we said they are sharing the needle because of that they may get the disease okay but usually society is having a tendency to isolate this kind of people those who are having hiv or aids infection so that's wrong see there is through simple touch or simple physical contact no one will get physic, uh, hiv or aids or this hiv infection so there is no need to isolate such people there is always a time lag between the infection and appearance of aids symptoms okay see if you are getting infected if one person is using an hiv infected person's needle within the second day they won't get the symptoms so it will take time there's a time lag infection there is a hiv infection it will take time to show the symptoms so this period that may take from few months to years it depends upon the immunity of that person see slowly that person will lose the immunity body immunity and some kind of symptoms will appear and finally that person won't be able to withstand this diseased condition and that may lead to death also okay so that's how hiv infection is coming so there is no need to isolate people those who are having hiv infection from the family or from society because through simple touch or through simple physical contact there is nothing nothing is going to happen there is no chance of spreading this disease in such ways okay we learned the ways of transmission of hiv so there is nothing to get tensed 
if one person is infected with this AIDS or because no need to isolate such people that will give mental torture to that is just torturing those people mentally so there is no need to isolate like that and so we said through unprotected sexual intercourse with an infected partner then from mother to child then injection drug that drug use through blood and blood products so such cases there is a chance of HIV infection. Got it? Then, how this AIDS or HIV virus is working inside body or how it is entering inside body? That's what we are going to learn next. So after entering into the body of a person, that virus, what that virus will do? That virus enters into macrophages got it so first when it is entering into the body of a person it is entering into macrophages what is macrophages macrophages means white blood cells it is a type of white blood cells or wbc and this wbc or the macrophage that is surrounding and killing microorganisms that what Normally, that what what it is doing that microphage that surrounds the microorganism. Those are entering inside the body that surrounds the microorganism and that kills the microorganism. And they'll remove the dead cells. And usually, they will stimulate the action of other organism. Okay, that will stimulate the action of other organs. Okay, they will stimulate the action of other organs. So what macrophages will do when another microorganism is entering, that will surround that microorganism and that try to kill that microorganism. So when this virus, HIV virus is entering inside the body of a person, that directly goes or that enters into macrophages. Because this macrophage, what they will do? Macrophage, they will identify the microorganism which is entering inside the body and they will try to kill that microorganism, right? So this virus directly enters to such type of cells, such type of white blood cells, so WBC. It is going to the macrophages directly. And in macrophages, what is what is happening inside macrophage? This RNA genome, we said uh, HIV, it is RNA virus. And this RNA genetic material of that virus, that replicates to form viral DNA. Okay, it is an RNA virus. So that is having genetic material RNA. Okay, that don't have DNA. But inside the cell, when it is entering inside the cell, a human cell, human cell is having DNA as the genetic material. Okay, don't get confused. When HIV, HIV or human immunovirus that is having HIV virus that is having RNA as the genetic material. Okay. When it is infecting the human cell or when it is attacking a human cell, it is having DNA as the genetic material. So inside the cell, DNA only will work. RNA genetic material can't work. So first, it will this virus will enter into macrophage and in macrophage, this RNA genome, this RNA genetic material of this virus, that will replicate and it will form viral DNA that will come from RNA through reverse transcription that is the process which is taking place from RNA through reverse transcription DNA is forming okay generally from DNA RNA will come that is transcription from transcription protein from RNA protein will come that is the translation process got it from DNA to RNA, RNA to protein. That is the central dogma. Okay. DNA to RNA, then RNA to protein. First one is transcription. DNA to RNA. Then RNA to protein. That is translation. Got it? But here, already we have the RNA. Viral RNA. Viral genetic material RNA. From that, we need a DNA. So, the reverse transcription should occur. Transcription means from DNA to RNA. From DNA, RNA is forming. So reverse transcription, reverse process of transcription will take place because we have the RNA. From that we need reverse process. We need to form the DNA. 
So what that viral genome will do? That will replicate through reverse transcription that viral RNA genetic material or genome. It will form viral DNA with the help of which enzyme? Reverse transcriptase because transcription, exact reverse process of transcription is taking place. Through reverse transcription, it is forming viral DNA. So with the help of which enzyme it is taking place? With the enzyme reverse transcriptase. The important enzyme is reverse transcriptase. With the help of this reverse transcriptase enzyme, RNA genome is forming viral DNA. Then next is this viral DNA, it is moving or it is getting incorporated into host cell DNA. Host cell is having or the which cell it is entering, the host cell, the human cell it is having DNA as the genetic material. So this viral DNA, it is getting incorporated into the host cell DNA. In the viral, that's what I said, with the viral RNA genetic material, it can't combine with the host cell DNA. So it formed viral DNA. From RNA, it formed viral DNA. Then this viral DNA will combine with the host DNA and that directs the infected cell to produce viral particles. Again, through that it will produce viral particles. Then after incorporated, incorporating, getting incorporated into the host cell, that DNA, again it will start this protein synthesis and the DNA, RNA, protein, all this process will continue. Then after getting into that host DNA, again along with the host DNA product, this will synthesize viral particles. Then that macrophage, it is get inside the macrophage, right? So the macrophage that continue to product, produce this virus and in this way act like HIV factory. That means it will produce more viral particles inside the host cell. Then at the same time that HIV enters into helper T cells, helper T lymphocyte and there also it replicates. There the replication of this viral particle taking place where? In helper T cells. Then these after replication that progeny virus that will release, that will get released into blood and that will attack other helper T lymphocytes also. Got it? The progeny virus that will, after multiplication, that will get released into blood and through that, that other, it will attack other T lymphocytes also. So like this, the T lymphocyte or the helper lymphocyte is getting continuously attacked by this viral progeny. So the number of that helper lymphocytes in the body, in the body of a person, an infected person, it will Reduce. Got it? So due to the multiplication there inside the T lymphocyte, this viral progeny, it is increasing the number. It is getting multiplied inside T lymphocyte. It is getting replicated and the number is increasing. It is getting released into the blood and it is attacking helper T lymphocyte. So through that attack, this helper T cells will get damaged. And like this repeated attack will reduce the, or it will decrease the number of helper lymphocytes in the body. And that person is getting completely infected. Okay, this lymphocyte, they are giving immunity. So that cells will get decreased and that person is completely getting infected. Here you can see. This is the diagrammatic representation. First, this is the retrovirus or HIV virus. That RNA, here viral RNA is the genetic material. Here you can see the RNA. Then, this is infecting one normal cell. Here, this is the normal cell. Here, this square one, this is the normal cell, animal cell. You can see the animal cell, which is labeled as animal cell. And this is the plasma membrane, the outer coating, that outer layer, that is the plasma membrane. So the virus is infecting a normal animal cell. So when that virus is getting introduced into the cell, here viral RNA, that viral genome or viral genetic material, that is the RNA, the genetic material, because this is belonging to retrovirus where the genetic material is RNA. 
so the viral rna is introduced into the cell okay here through reverse transcription that viral from viral rna viral dna is getting produced through reverse transcription with the help of reverse transcriptase enzyme from viral rna viral dna is getting produced then this viral dna it is getting incorporated into host genome along with this host genome this viral dna is also getting combined got it then this viral dna plus the host cell dna both will be there in this this new viral rna it is produced from this because here after combining with the host dna again the normal procedures normal processes everything will take place because from dna rna will get produced and it will form the protein all those things will take place so along with the because here it is along with the host dna here you can see the viral dna also that viral dna will produce viral particles so new viral rna is produced by the infected cell and this new viruses are produced and new viruses can infect other cells also it will get infected with other cells also slowly whole body will lose the immunity got it then during that infection period that person will be suffering from fever weight loss diarrhea because we said syndrome it's a syndrome you acquire immunodeficiency syndrome it's a group of symptoms we said syndrome means a group of symptoms so they will be that person will be suffering that infected hiv infected person will be suffering from a group of diseases or group of symptoms so we can see diarrhea weight loss fever everything because that person is losing the immunity to withstand this kind of disease so due to the decrease in the number of helper t lymphocytes we said it is attacking the helper t lymphocytes and the number of helper t lymphocytes in blood it is decreasing due to the attack viral attack so it is getting decreased so that reduces the immunity power that person will start or that person starts suffering from infections so usually the bacterial viral fungal infection all kind of infections that person will be having because he lost that person lost the power to fight against this disease so the patient becomes so immunodeficient that he or that uh, person that particular person he or she will be unable to protect himself from this kind of infections because that person completely or that individual lost the capacity to withstand so that person won't be able to fight with this kind of causative organism as the immune system is so weak so they are unable to protect themselves from this kind of infections then which method is used to detect this kind of disease or aids enzyme linked immunosorbent assay elisa elisa test is commonly used to know the hiv infection so the diagnostic test for aids it is elisa test elisa enzyme linked immunosorbent assay enzyme linked immunosorbent assay through this test we can detect hiv infection then treatment of aids we can use anti retroviral drug but this will give less effect because it will give only partially that will be effective because prolonged life of the patient we can we cannot survive from this kind of immunodeficient condition so finally that will lead to death only the death is sure that is inevitable that is sure because that person day by day that person is losing the immunity power or immunity body immunity so they can't prevent death but that retroviral drugs that will be effective for a lesser time or we can survive we can slowly 
uh, we can withstand against or some 20 25 percent we can withstand against these conditions we can manage that condition that's all but we can't prevent death then prevention of aids how to prevent this aids Actually, AIDS, it has no cure, no prevention, uh, no cure. We can't cure that disease. If one person is getting infected with the disease, we can manage that disease condition with drugs, some kind of drugs. But there is no cure, complete cure is not at all reported. We can detect the disease using enzyme linked immunosorbent assay, that is ELISA test, but we can manage the situation with some kind of drugs but there is no cure for such disease or there is no cure for AIDS. So prevention, we can prevent this disease. Prevention is a better option. Conscious behavior patterns and The infection, how and all this infection is taking place, that we should be conscious about such situations. <coughs> so that prevents <coughs> that prevents only prevention we can do. After getting infected, there is no cure for this. We can only prevent this disease condition. So how to prevent this? We should be bothered about the transmission of this disease, how it is getting transmitted. So such situations can be avoided. Like in, it, this is not a simple disease like fever, cold and all. So there is some situation through which it is getting transmitted. So such situations can be avoided maximum. So infections in blood transfusion patients, the newborn babies, in such cases and all, Due to poor monitoring, it is getting infected. Okay, blood transfusion. If during blood transfusion, if both the patient, the patient and the blood, uh, the donor, both are checking properly if they have any infection. If after proper checking, the blood transfusion is taking place, means it will never get infected, right? And from mother to baby, that time on now we can monitor whether that person is any person is having any kind of disease. So how to prevent, how to protect that child from the mother without getting infected. Then during blood transfusion, how to take care without getting infection. So that is all due to bad monitoring in such kind of situations that disease is spreading or uh, HIV infection is getting due to bad monitoring. So in such situation during blood transfusion and a child birth and all, we can take care, we can avoid that. So, here in the case of AIDS, we can say don't die due to ignorance. Due to bad monitoring, you should not get HIV infection. Okay, so we can prevent this. Prevention is better than cure. There is no cure for this disease. So, better to prevent. Better to prevent AIDS. Then, in our country, the National AIDS Control Organization and other non-governmental organization, they are doing a lot to educate people about AIDS. Actually, the main thing is we need to educate people about this condition. We should know, we should teach them what is the condition or what is the situation if one person is getting infected or what is the exact form of this disease or how how this infection is getting or how after getting infection how a person will be or how a person is getting infection and at, how it is getting transmitted from one person to another person. We should teach people, we should give proper education about all these things to people. In society we should educate them about AIDS. So World Health Organization, they have started a number of programs to prevent the spreading of HIV infection. They have started, they have taken several steps to prevent the spreading of HIV infection. Making blood banks. So from blood banks, blood banks means their proper tests have been done to, uh, before 
getting blood for blood transfusion such things and all blood banks are there not directly from a person so ensuring the use of only disposable needles and syringe in public and private hospital and clinic in clinics there there should not be reusage reusing of this kind of uh, needles and surgical instruments and we should not reuse such thing so there, there should be only use and throw of the syringe and needle that will prevent the infection in clinic and hospitals and all then pre distribution of condoms then controlling drug abuse drug abuse we need to control then educating people about safe sex and promoting regular checkups for hiv in susceptible population in slum areas and all we need to educate the for checkups regular checkups of hiv infection and some Uh, like this, some steps we need to take. So WHO they have made all these kind of steps towards the prevention of this AIDS. WHO they have restricted or they have advised to do this blood banking system. Then disposable needs in private hospital needles and syringes should be disposable and. Yeah, distribution of condoms, then controlling drug abuse, then say educating people about safe sex and promoting regular checkups for HIV in susceptible population, and all these kinds of steps. All this will help to prevent AIDS. Got it? So we learned about what is AIDS and the nature of that HIV virus. how it is getting infected into a cell and what are all processes are going on inside the cell after getting infection then how we can check this disease elisa test the test diagnostic test for this disease then how to prevent aids so all these things step wise we need to learn this is very important for neat and board exam then See, if HIV infection or AIDS infection is there, means we should not hide. There is that should not be hidden because that infected person in one or the other way that person may spread to many other people. Okay, then HIV infected people they need help from other people. So society society should deal that in a clever manner not not like okay we should not leave it simply we should treat such people in a clever manner they they don't actually they need the help help of people we should not insult them we should not isolate them we should educate society about the situation of this infection or the condition of this infection after infection what and all they should do or how they should not if an infected person is there means they should not spread the disease for that we need to educate them okay so we need we need to handle the situation in a clever manner to prevent the spreading of our transmission of this disease then next another disease another important disease is cancer cancer means that is a very dangerous disease in human being right and that causes the death death of so many individuals that more than a million indians they are suffering from cancer and most of the people are dying due to this kind of disease this cancer disease annually so many deaths they are reporting due to this cancer and how this cancer is developing or how the normal cells are forming this cancerous cells and what is the treatment how we can control this disease all these things still researches are going on to find out the reason of this cancer we are saying so many reasons like chemicals the pollution all those things everything is causing cancer we we are saying so such kind of situations can be avoided right you say the chemicals and nowadays for eating whatever food we are getting that is also having 
poison, percentage of poison because everywhere they are spraying in all kind of field, agriculture field, they are spraying chemicals. So day by day, those chemicals are getting accumulated and that is making changes in our body also. Vegetables, without poison, we are not getting any vegetables. Everything is with chemicals. So such situation that is making our body in a, or that is, Every day we are moving into a dangerous condition that is all changing our body cells. So in our body, cell growth and differentiation, it is highly controlled and regulated. You know, in our body, body cells, they are getting developed or cells are growing. The cells are growing and then they are different. Differentiation of cells means they are moving into particular functions. So cell division, cell differentiation, everything is happening in a controlled manner or it is well regulated in our body. Our body is controlling the growth of cell, division of cell, everything is in a controlled way. So in cancer, cancer means that's a condition because there is a breakdown of this regulatory mechanism. Cancer means it's not, not like a, a condition like a... a what is that? We can't say like hepatitis or something, not like that. It's like our body control, it is that cells are losing the control. Because I said in our body, body in our body cells are developing, or cells are growing, then cell division is taking place, cell differentiation is taking place. Everything is happening in a controlled manner. All these things are under control, right? There is no uncontrolled growth. There is no uncontrolled cell division. Alright? So all these things are under control. So when the cells, the cells or this regulatory mechanism, the body is losing the control of this cell division, cell growth, cell differentiation and all, that situation is called as cancer. The body control over the cell division, cell growth and all, Body is losing the control. The control mechanism, that condition is losing. That is called as cancer. So normal cells, they have the property that is called as contact inhibition. Because in which contact with other cells that will inhibit their uncontrolled growth. See, if one cell is in contact with the other cell, that cell will be having, that will be having some kind of inhibiting effect for the uncontrolled growth. That regulates the growth. There is no chance of uncontrolled growth. But in the case of cancerous cells, they are losing the capacity or they are losing this property because their growth is uncontrolled. There is no control over cancer cells. Their growth we cannot control. There is no regulatory mechanism over these cancer cells. That's why they are getting multiplied or they are getting divided into mass of cells. That body is losing the control over some cells. That is cancerous cells. Body don't have any kind of control for their growth, development, cell division, differentiation for all these things. Body is losing the control. So that kind of diseases, that kind of cells, they will multiply or they will form mass of cells. And that's how they are forming tumors. They are called as tumors. So as a result of this, cancerous cells just continue. They will continue their division. And they will give rise to mass of cells. And they are called as, those mass of cells are called as tumors. Then, there are two types of tumors, benign and malignant. Two types of tumors are there, benign tumor and malignant tumor. Here you can see, see these, in this picture it's very clear, these are the normal cells. So normal cells, one cell will get divided into two and or some cells, some old cells after they are completing their life cycle they may die. So after that, another cells will form like that. Several processes are taking place in our body, right? But when the cells are losing the control, these are normal cells, it's brown color. Here you can see this peach color. They are the cancerous cells. They are losing the control. So they are 
without any control they are multiplying and there is instead of two cells they are forming multiple number of cells multiple cells they are forming and that forms the tumor there is a growth extra cells accumulation of extra cells so that is called as tumor so that kind of tumor like this uncontrolled cell division that tumors are of two types which are the two types benign and malignant benign tumor and malignant tumor benign tumor they will be in their original location they won't spread to any other part of the body and they will cause very little damage to body benign tumor means they won't move from one place to another place where they got divided and they form multiple mass of cells they will be there only they won't move to another part of body they will cause little slight damage to our body but they will be there in that place where they got multiplied in that place they will be there as a growth or a tumor in that original location but they won't move from one location of one body part to or one location to another location they will cause only slight damage but in the case of malignant tumor they are mass of proliferating cells they are called as neoplastic or tumor cells they are called as tumor cells or neoplastic cells they are proliferating cells these cells this malignant tumor they can move from one part to another part or they they are mass of proliferating cells and they are called as neoplastic or tumor cells malignant tumors what is what do you mean by malignant tumors it is a mass of proliferating cells they are called as neoplastic or tumor cells okay these tumor cells malignant tumor cells they will grow very rapidly and they will damage the surrounding normal tissue surrounding normal tissue these uh, tumor cells will damage they will grow very fast and they will damage the surrounding tissues and what they will do these cells will divide continuously their division is more faster than the normal cell and number of cells also more so what will happen they will absorb nutrients from the neighboring cells so finally what will happen that neighboring cells also will get damaged because due to that extra division and more number of cells they will absorb nutrients from the other cells or surrounding tissues so the surrounding tissues are getting damaged okay so these cells through blood and all these cells will move to other place or other locations also other parts of body also and they will start growing in that place wherever they are moving through blood it will move to different parts of body and there also it will start the growth so they will start a new tumor in that location also that body part also this property it is moving from one place to another place through body fluid through blood and wherever it is reaching there will start the tumor or there will start it, it will grow as a new tumor so that property is called as metastasis and that is the more pure property of malignant tumors so benign tumors they won't move from one place to another place wherever it is there it will grow and it will multiply but it will cause less damage to body but in the case of malignant tumor they are mass of proliferating cell and they are called as neoplastic or tumor cells but these cells they will grow very rapidly and the number of cells produced or the division will take place very fast and more number of cells will be produced and it will form a tumor but for the more number of cells it will absorb nutrients from the surrounding tissues and finally it will damage the surrounding cells of the surrounding tissues because they are absorbing they are uh, competing for the nutrients so they these new cells that multiple cells they will absorb the nutrients and finally it will damage the surrounding tissues so such cells they will move from one place to another place through body fluids or through blood and wherever it is reaching there it will grow as a new tumor got it there it will form a new tumor or a new growth so that growth that property is called as metastasis through body fluid it is moving and where it is reaching there it is growing as a new tumor there starts a new tumor that property is called as metastasis 
and that is the more dangerous or dangerous condition of malignant tumor that is the most feared property of malignant tumors because the benign tumors won't move or it will be there only in a particular place but what is the case of malignant tumors wherever they are reaching there and all it will form this cell multiplication it will form as a tumor then causes of cancer what are all the causes of cancer transformation of normal cells into cancerous neoplastic cell that may induce by physical chemical or biological agents so physical chemical or biological agents this normal cells they will get converted into this neoplastic cell or cancerous cell that is one cause of cancer so these agents which are helping for this physical chemical or biological agents they are called as carcinogens what are carcinogens the agents which are helping for the transformation of a normal cell into a cancerous cell they are called as carcinogens the agents which are helping a normal cells to form a cancerous cells or the trans which are causing the transformation of a normal cell to a cancerous cells or a neoplastic cell they are called as carcinogens then ionizing radiation like x rays and gamma rays and non ionizing radiations like uv that causes damage of the dna and that finally it will lead to the transformation of a normal cell into a neoplastic cell so radiations like x ray gamma ray then uv all this will cause dna damage damage in the dna so that also will change the cell character and finally that will form a neoplastic cell then the chemical carcinogens present in tobacco tobacco smoke that is identified as a major cause of lung cancer tobacco tobacco causes cancer so that tobacco smoke in uh, the chemical which is present or the carcinogen present in tobacco smoke that is a major carcinogen or that is that causing lung cancer then cancer causing viruses that means oncogenic viruses oncogenic viruses they are called as viral oncogenes cancer causing viral viruses they are called as viral oncogenes so several genes called cellular oncogenes or proto oncogenes that also have been identified in normal cell which when activated under condition that could lead to oncogenic transformation of the cells so there are several cellular oncogenes also or proto oncogenes these proto oncogenes or cellular oncogenes under particular circumstances or under particular conditions or certain conditions they will transform the normal cells into oncogenic cells okay they will form cancerous cells from the normal cell from the normal cell these condition in certain condition will proto oncogenes or cellular oncogenes they will convert the normal cells to cancerous cells so these are the causes of cancer so hope up to this everything is clear if you have any doubt you can ask me you want me to repeat anything is it clear the treatment of cancer then uh, how to detect this cancer all these things we'll learn in the next class so hope up to this clear if you have any doubt you can ask me in the next class thank you